just how are you? I'm, I'm all right. 2020 is a long year. I'm looking forward to 2021, actually. I'm actually in really good spirits this year. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing a lot of things different. We have a lot of plans for the channel, but 2020 was definitely draining. Oh, you guys got fancy with this? How likely do you think a PS5 Pro is, and do you think this generation of gaming could achieve photorealism in games? Photorealism in games is kind of a weird thing to argue for, right? Because it also depends on what's happening in terms of photorealism. Like what you're trying to recreate will have, you know, different demands to have actually happen. Uh, as far as something that's going to actually look like the real world, no, I don't think that's gonna happen this generation, but we're definitely gonna keep getting closer and closer and closer. As far as PS5 Pro goes, I'm honestly not sure. The entire concept of a pro system is kind of a new thing, really. The PS4 and the Xbox One were the first time that we got something like that, and it's mainly because the timing of the original systems coming out, they kind of ended up being underpowered in some ways, and so they really needed that kind of mid-cycle refresh to push to a new resolution. I don't know if that's gonna be necessary for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Now, I think there's definitely gonna be a re-released model at some point, definitely some kind of slimline kind of thing, but as far as a pro goes, Especially with how much people are rumoring and talking about it lately where it's like, oh man, PS5 is out, now we're already talking about PS5 Pro happening in the next like two years. That's all insanity. If there is any kind of Pro system that happens for PS5, we're not seeing that till at least 2023. Who has the best outlook for 2021? MS, Sony, or Nintendo? So this is a bit of a weird one right now because I think all the companies have interesting announcements lined out for their future. If we're just talking about sort of what exclusives we know about that are eventually on the horizon, stuff that's being worked on. But for 2021 specifically, really the only company that I think has actually disclosed a number of games that they're saying are 2021 is Sony. Now I emphasize saying because there's plenty of games where they might say, hey, this is slated for 2021. And then turns out, never mind, we're gonna push it back three more times and then it's holiday season 2023. But as far as games being slated for 21, Sony has talked up a lot more stuff. Nintendo has a few really exciting things that we don't have dated just quite yet. Breath of the Wild 2, which I think is going to be 2021, hasn't actually been listed for that time slot just yet. We still don't know what's going on with Metroid Prime 4, Bayonetta 3. There's a lot of stuff that if it came out this year, would be very strong for Nintendo, we just don't know. And the same applies for Microsoft. Xbox announced a whole bunch of new games they're working on after they acquired a bunch of studios. I did a video on this recently. And a lot of it sounds great, but we have no idea when any of it's coming out. They announced a new Fable, don't have a date for it yet or a time slot. New Perfect Dark, don't know when that's gonna happen. There's a lot of stuff that sounds exciting, but we just don't know when we're getting it just yet. Sony, on the other hand, has leaned heavily into saying, hey, these are probably gonna be 2021. We've got a new God of War on the way. We have Ratchet and Clank coming very soon. There's more titles that are at least being hyped up for this year. If that ends up being the case, I don't know, because ultimately a lot of this can end up changing. But as far as what's being promised for this year, I feel like Sony has the most going on. What special edition console variants would you predict for the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series XS, if any, Big fan of your videos, thank you. So special edition consoles are always kind of a weird thing this early in the life cycle because right now we're just focused on whether or not you can even buy a regular system. I mean, PS5s are constantly disappearing. So even considering the concept of a special edition is kind of crazy right now, I don't think we're gonna see any in the next, you know, three months or so. I think if more than likely when we get special editions, it's probably gonna be this coming holiday season. So we kind of have a full year with the regular systems and then they can start to work out different special edition ones. Now, as far as what special edition ones we could get, there's a lot of different options here. Uh, for PlayStation, I think the best bet is currently the next God of War game is planned for 2021. And so if that ends up being a holiday release, I think God of War is a very likely choice for the first PS5 Special Edition. We got one for the PS4, and it's definitely one of the bigger franchises underneath PlayStation. They have a lot of major franchises getting new entries this year, but as far as names go, I feel like God of War is what we're gonna get for PS5. As for Xbox, they're a little more willing to actually kind of mess around a little bit with non-game specific special editions. We might get some kind of cool color combo or some kind of limited run design that's just something pop cultural. As far as like a major wide retail release goes, Halo Infinite at this point, after the pushback and delay, I think that's something they could end up doing because again, kind of like how God of War is a really big deal for PlayStation, Halo is basically as big as it gets for Microsoft. I mean, that Master Chief is basically their mascot. Will you reveal what's under the bean? Add a million subs. I keep saying this. Just million subs, it'll happen. 
I swear, promise, maybe. What are you looking forward to in the next Nintendo console? What would be a must have? This is a weird question right now because especially with the actually the wording of next Nintendo console, that's actually not assuming that we're talking about like Switch Pro or some kind of Switch revision. It could just be flat out, what's the next Nintendo thing after this? Because obviously a really popular rumor to talk about off and on all the time is, are we getting some kind of Switch Pro and wasn't that happening? And Nintendo has repeatedly been like, guys, stop it. Please, we're not working on that right now. We're not talking about that right now. In light of thinking in terms of like a Switch revision, I did a video on this recently talking about the kind of things that really stand out to me using a Switch versus next gen systems. And really I think the big thing for me is actually just better account management, not even a hardware thing, just improving how they handle account management so I can more easily switch between multiple switches, especially if I have, you know, eventually there's one that's better docked and then I have my light for the go. As far as a hardware aspect thing goes though, load times. Honestly, while the Switch is not the worst when it comes to load times, the speed that an SSD has afforded us on the PS5 and Xbox Series X has really ruined load times on the Switch for me. And it varies a little bit based on whether you're running a game off of a card or off of the internal storage or whatever, but ultimately they're all slower than the SSDs in the PS5 and Xbox Series X. And that's the biggest thing for me, like more performance and all that kind of stuff is always great, but ultimately just keeping me in the action of a game is definitely something I really care about. And the less time I spend staring at a loading screen with tips, the happier I'm gonna be. Now, as for whether or not we actually get a new Switch or maybe something completely entirely different if Nintendo wants to try at another pure dedicated handheld or at a pure dedicated home console, I think part of the fun with Nintendo is not knowing what to expect. I mean, I can give like the easy answers of like, oh yeah, I want 4K support and you know, I want this kind of stuff. Honestly, part of the fun of Nintendo is that they go out of their way to do weird stuff that not really anyone expects. I mean, the Switch was a simple idea and yet everyone was surprised when we saw it revealed. The Wii U, I thought was actually a really good idea, even though they completely messed up the marketing and no one knew what it was and thought it was just a Wii upgrade and then no one bought it. I'm all for really just kind of waiting and seeing what Nintendo does, because as often as they do every now and then shoot themselves in the foot, they tend to have an interesting enough new idea that I get really hyped for trying that out. In 2021, can you see Xbox and PlayStation rolling out their game streaming services to third-party hardware, new Apple TV, etc.? And if so, what effect will that have on this hardware generation's relevance? I absolutely see that being something that Xbox does. They're already talking about bringing Game Pass and xCloud to other devices. They've already want to bring that to other platforms. It's currently not on Apple stuff, but it is on Android, and you can at least stream play your Xbox on Apple devices. Uh, I think there's absolutely a future where they wanna bring at least a catalog of Xbox games and the platform to things like Apple TV, so on and so forth. Sony's a little weirder here. I think Sony's cool with you being able to stream play your own system, but I don't think they necessarily love the idea of giving you access to a full catalog on something that isn't a Sony device. I mean, they messed with PlayStation Now in the past and that has come to other platforms. You are able to use PlayStation Now on PC, for instance. They did try having it being this kind of built-in thing in Sony TV specifically. So it's something that Sony's messed with, but I think Sony is a lot more enamored with the sort of classic concept of you buy our console, you buy our product, and that's how you get access to our unique games. And it helps that they do have the strong catalog of exclusives that they currently have. I think there is an eventual future where Sony does budge harder on that, but between the two, Xbox is absolutely going to try and make that move first because they're already in the process of doing that. Again, I think Sony is more in love with the concept of traditional generations. And so again, they're trying to make sure that the PS5 stays as a relevant thing. Xbox, while I think they certainly want people to buy Series Xs and Series Ss, I think there's a less of a care of making it the only way to play their games. I think they're very cool with the idea of eventually there's just an Xbox ecosystem and you just play the games however you want to play them. And in fact, I think that also means that between the two consoles, Xbox is more likely to even release some kind of new hardware before Sony, not necessarily one that's like next gen more powerful, but just even just an incremental upgrade. I think they're really leaning away towards the traditional console cycle and are trying to escape that, whereas Sony is really leaning harder and harder into that kind of classic approach. Oh, there's me. And a question. What's your dream 2021 announcement? Just a game that is not currently announced, but you'd be most excited about if it got announced. Not necessarily released this year, just announced. Oh man, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that I would love to see either come back, new sequels to things or proper remakes. I think more than anything, even though it is kind of already announced, 
I would love to see some kind of full confirmation of what's going on with the next Bethesda RPG, whether that's Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield, just something. Because we got an Elder Scrolls trailer however many years ago it was, and it was literally just, there, here's the title, please stop asking us about this game. Because really, it's 2021 now. Uh, Skyrim came out in 2011. And so we are getting up to the 10 year mark since that game came out, and we have had no new Elder Scrolls games since. So, Fushwada, that's the command for knocking things over. That or if Square brings back the Chrono series or Ogre series, but I, I've accepted those are all dead. Golden Sun 4 or Golden Sun Remake? Ooh, this is tough. Okay, so first off, when we say Golden Sun Remake, I'm gonna immediately assume that it's the first two games together because they do form kind of like a duology, pair, whatever. The thing that makes 3 weird, right, is that I didn't love 3. It was fine, it was okay, but it does end on a cliffhanger. So being able to actually like get resolution to all of that and actually see what they were planning for the long-term story, if they even did have a plan at the time, uh, would be great but I do also really like the original games and wouldn't mind just having an extra pretty new way to play that. If it was up to me and it was my choice between remaking the original two or making a brand new one, I think I vote brand new. Because I can still go back and play those on the advance when I want. It's not a particularly difficult game to replay since I have access to them. So yeah, new Golden Sun, I would go for four. But I'll take both. That's glass breaking. <laughs> symmetrical or asymmetrical sticks? Ooh, okay, so look. I'm a big fan and believer of the fact that personal preference is a thing. I think when it comes to something like symmetrical or asymmetrical, I don't think there's necessarily an objectively better option. But that being said, for me personally, I do like asymmetrical sticks. Part of the reason for that is because I like playing a lot of older school games where I actually end up having my thumbs on one stick and on the ABXY, and so that ends up making more sense for those situations. I do like how it's positioned also for, you know, anything that involves dual stick controls. I think symmetrical, like on the PlayStation, I do like a little more for like, flying and stuff, but as far as first-person shooters or even just more traditional games, uh, asymmetrical just feels right to me. How do you sort and organize all of these systems, controllers, cables? This includes legacy hardware and software. I don't very well, if I'm being honest. I have at home different like little cubbies that I put some of my systems into and I try to file the cables and stuff away in little baggies. I've multiple times tried to go out of my way to make stuff organized nicely, but eventually, the worser parts of my instincts take over and I just take a system out when I want to use it, plug it in, and then it gets put away somewhere very strangely. It's not something I'm proud of. Uh, I like having the wide variety of systems I do so that I can go back and play older games, but yeah, look, in all honesty, guys, I know we make stuff look pretty on camera. Don't turn to me for cable management advice. Do you have any gaming New Year's resolutions? Ooh, um, I don't know if I necessarily have gaming New Year's resolutions. I have work-related ones for like what I want to do with this channel and stuff, which I guess does actually tie into gaming. Gaming specifically, something that I have kind of talked to myself a little bit. I'm also weird about resolutions. I don't know, they just feel like generic goals to me. It's a good thing to have, but I don't lean super hard into like making a list or whatever. In general, I'm trying to do more tabletop stuff in my free time. Uh, I'm trying to get better at DMing because I've been a forever DM for my friends and I haven't always put the full effort into it that I think I should, uh, as far as making it more interesting and even cooler. So I'm really trying to work on that right now. Uh, and then I'd like to put at least a bigger dent in my backlog. One of the weird, I wouldn't necessarily call this an upside of COVID, but I was able to play through more games as a result of being stuck at home a lot. And so I've actually done a decent dent and I want to keep doing that and kind of finish off a lot more games because there's a lot of stuff that I like in concept, but I've never gone around to finishing because I just keep switching what game I'm playing. You don't know what's under here. I do, I think. It's been a while, I haven't taken off for, I sleep in this one.